In the last video, we created the DeepQ network module with PyTorch. In this video, we'll implement Experience Replay and also add in the hyperparameters. To train a deep network, we need to send in a lot of examples in order for the network to generalize the pattern and learn from it. And we can't just show it one instance of a certain situation. We need to show it the same or similar instances over and over again before it can learn. To overcome this challenge, we can use something called experience replay. An experience consists of these five components. The current state is represented by these 12 values, what action the bird took, and what the new state is after taking that action, what rewards were given for that action, and whether it's game over or not. We take this combination and save it into this memory here, which is basically a Python deck. A deck is a double-ended list. We keep adding experiences to the front. It's gonna keep pushing, pushing, and eventually the deck is gonna get full and it's gonna start purging the old stuff. In other words, it's first in, first out. This way, even if we train for an extremely long time, we'll never run out of memory. When we want to train the network, we'll just grab a badge from the deck. Now let's hop over to VS Code and implement this. I'm gonna create a new file. I'll just call it experience replay. Because the implementation is actually really simple, I'll just copy and paste it in here. So we have this replay memory class here in the init function. We'll take in the maximum length to initialize the deck. Also, if we want to control the uh, randomness, we can send in a seed to initialize random. The append function simply appends the experience to the memory. And we expect the transition to be this tuple here. When we call the sample function, we'll just randomly sample the memory and return whatever batch size we specified. And this just returns the length of the memory. Okay, going over to the agent.py file, we can initialize the replay memory. Uh, let's import it first. And then in the run function, I wanna check if we're training. And if we are training, we'll create the memory. I'll just leave this 10,000 here for now. We'll make it dynamic later. I'll just call it memory for short. Down here in our loop, right after taking an action, if we are in training mode, I wanna add the experience to the memory. Uh, let me rename some of these things. This one should be called new state. This one should be called state. And at the end here, I wanna keep track of my current state. So I'm going to set state equal to new state. Right now we're only set up to train for one episode. The bird takes action in this loop and then when it sees terminate it exits and we're done. So this counts as one episode. What we need to do is wrap this loop around another loop. Usually in other tutorials you might see a loop where you have to specify how many episodes you want to train for. Well, the problem is we don't know how many episodes we want to train for. It's just guessing, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to train indefinitely and then manually stop training when we're satisfied with the results. So there is a Python module that lets us generate a number indefinitely. It's called iter tools. Let me import that. So you can see here that it just generates a number from zero and keeps going. Let me move the termination flag and put it in here while not terminate it. Take this out. At the beginning of the episode, we'll reset the environment. Also initialize terminated. Now it's a good time to count how much reward we're actually collecting per episode. I'll add it down here. Let me add a variable to keep track of the rewards per episode. So here's our episode. We should add it right here. Since we're training indefinitely, I'm never gonna close the environment. 
we don't need this. Later on, I'll add some code to graph this so that during training, we can look at the graph and see if we're satisfied with the rewards that we're getting. That way we'll know when to stop training. Right now we're just taking random actions. So we need to implement the Epsilon Greedy algorithm here. But before I do that, I need to import some hyperparameters. Let me make a new file. I'll call it hyperparameters.yaml. A YAML file is really easy to work with. Since we're gonna test on Cardpole first, I'm gonna create a set of parameters for Cardpole. Uh, I'll name that set of parameters Cardpole1. Put a code in here. Whatever goes under this set has to be indented. Let me make the environment ID dynamic. So this is something I can pass in later on when we swap to Flappy Bird, we can just change this parameter. We declared the uh, replay memory earlier, so we can pass in the memory size dynamically. If the memory size is too small, then uh, you know a lot of the experiences gets pushed out and you won't have enough experience to train with. We should set a pretty big number, but really it doesn't really matter if you put 100,000 or 200,000. It doesn't make much difference when the number's big. So we'll just go with uh, 100,000. Also later on, we're gonna sample from the replay memory. So let me put a batch size here. And usually it's like 32, 64. It's a pretty small number. Now for the Epsilon Greedy algorithm that we're gonna be implementing, We'll start epsilon at 1, meaning 100% random. And then we'll slowly decrease epsilon all the way down to 0.05. That means when it's at 0.05, there's a 5% chance that the agent will take a random action and 95% chance that it will take the action dictated by the trained policy or the policy that is being trained. Let's hop back to agent.py and we'll load the hyperparameters. We'll need to import YAML. We need to install YAML. So do pip install pi YAML. I think I might have it already. Okay. Now in the agent class, we can add an init function. In the init function, we'll pass in the hyperparameter set. In this case, we'll pass in card pole one and uh, we'll read this bunch of uh, parameters. This just opens the YAML file and uh, loads it. Loads all the hyperparameters from the file and then we'll grab the set that we want, which was card pole one. We'll get it into this array. Uh, we don't need to save this. Now I'll save the parameters as we just set in the ammo file into variable. Now that I have the replay memory size, I'm going to replace this constant. Now we have the epsilon parameters, we can implement epsilon greedy. But I will do that in the next video. If that video is available, it should have popped up by now. Otherwise, maybe check out one of my other reinforcement learning videos.